And we've got some breaking news out of Congress. House Speaker John Boehner will resign at the end of October. Our congressional correspondent, Nancy Cordes, is on the phone for us. We want to go right to her and get the very latest. Nancy. Hi, this is uh, really coming as a surprise, not only to us, but to uh, members of the Republican conference who learned this from Speaker Boehner uh, in one of their routine closed door meetings uh, just a short time ago. Uh, he says that he initially planned to step down uh, through the at the end of last year, but then uh, when his number two, Majority Leader Eric Cantor, was uh, defeated in his primary, that changed his calculation. However, the speaker says now he believes putting members through prolonged leadership turmoil would do irreparable damage to the institution. And so he's going to resign not just his speakership, but his seat in Congress effective October 30th. What he means by turmoil is uh, that there is a group of conservative lawmakers uh, who have grown increasingly restive over his leadership, who don't believe that he uh, has done enough for the right. They believe that he has caved uh, on issues that are important to, to him, to them, rather. Uh, he has argued that he is only practicing the art of the possible and that he's trying to avoid uh, things like a government shutdown, uh, which is possible we could see again next month if those conservatives don't back down on some of their demands to uh, defund Planned Parenthood, um, even after it's been shown that the Senate uh, can't pass a funding bill that includes defunding of Planned Parenthood. So uh, this uh, it really uh, sort of throws things into question because Speaker Boehner, um, for all of his uh, in detractors on the right, has has really done a pretty masterful job of trying to thread the needle between uh, showing that he is listening uh, to his his right flank uh, while also trying to uh, keep the government running. And uh, it's an open question whether anyone who replaces him can really do anything that's all that much different than what he's been doing until now. Uh, we know that uh, Speaker Boehner will be making an appearance uh, probably in the next half hour or so. Will you be there, Nancy? I won't be. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm in the CBS News Bureau right now because, uh, like a lot of people, we had absolutely no warning that this was going to be happening. So I'm scrambling to get down there now, and hopefully we'll be there in time. You know, it's one thing to step away from being the speaker, but resigning completely is something entirely different. Do you have any idea why now in particular? Well, you know, once you've been in leadership for a long time, it's really no fun to go back to being a rank-and-file mm. member of Congress. You know, uh, you saw yesterday in all those pictures uh, from the Pope's visit what a, a glorious office, what a glorious view the Speaker has from the Speaker's balcony. He's got all kinds of perks. He's got, you know, he's got Secret Service protection. He's got drivers. Uh, he's got an enormous staff. All of that goes away when you lose your speakership. Uh, and so it's not uncommon when someone resigns their leadership post for them to say, and you know what, I think I'll step down from Congress altogether. Mm. Thank you, Nancy. We also want to bring in our senior political editor, Steve Chikaris. Steve, what are you hearing about this? Well, it's just really interesting that he's uh, choosing to do this now. It sounds like from his statement that he wanted to step down or leave last year. Um, which, you know, just sort of tells me that uh, this is a guy who's maybe sort of fed up with, with what's going on in the House. I mean, think about this. He became Speaker uh, in 2011 after uh, Republicans took over uh, Congress after the 2010 elections on the backs of uh, the Tea Party. And I think what you're seeing here is the Tea Party uh, has not been a big fan of Speaker Boehner in recent years. There have been fights. There have been threats to his speakership pretty much uh, every year since he's he's been running uh, uh, running the Republicans in the House. And, uh, you know, now this is coming to a head with this Planned Parenthood fight and the, uh, the impending possible shutdown. And it's just pretty clear to me he's tired of this. I thought what was interesting is, you know, we were all sort of chuckling at, at John Boehner's emotions yesterday when the, when the Pope was in town and he was at the ver on the verge of tears or crying most of the day. Obviously, this was weighing on his mind, and he knew this was going to happen. Uh, and so there was clearly a lot more to uh, his emotions than just the Pope coming to visit. Yeah, I think that's definitely a, a signature of his, the fact that he can get emotional. I'm wondering what else will he be known for as we look back on his career? Certainly the last bit of his career has been marred by dust-ups within the party. But before that, uh, you know, he was a significant member as well. 
Yeah, I mean, he's been a leader in the Republican Party for, for many years. I mean, he even though he is uh, has a voting record that is as conservative as any uh, any conservative Republican, he has this uh, this view, uh, at least a view of him among Tea Party types, that he's not conservative enough. And it's just sort of interesting how this is this this split in the Republican Party. Now that they're in charge, you would think that that uh, of, of both houses, you would think they would try to figure out how to work together on this. But clearly. Um, that faction of the Republican Party is loud and strong and stronger than ever. Uh, and he's just, it seems like he's just giving up in, in dealing with this. Uh, he's going to be 66 years old this year. He was clearly ready to retire last year. And he's probably saying to himself, I don't need any of this. Uh, this, you know, maybe he's come to the conclusion that uh, a lot of voters have that things just don't work as smoothly in Washington as we like them to. And Nancy, everybody is obviously going to want to talk to Boehner. He is going to be, oh, Nancy's not there, but Steve, he's going to be the, the guest on Face the Nation mm -hmm. this Sunday with John Dickerson. So that should definitely be an interview to watch. Couldn't be better timing for John and Face the Nation. I mean, we're all interested anyway in talking to to, to Boehner in general about uh, the uh, possible shutdown in the Planned Parenthood fight, but now there's a lot more to talk to him about. Any possible names for the the replacement of the speaker, I don't know if this has come up. This has come up before, but who would be the next contender? Well, so Kevin McCarthy is the next guy in line behind Boehner. But if if the issue is with the establishment Republicans, at least among the Tea Party crowd, then I'm not sure he's going to be the answer for everybody. Uh, Jim Jordan, who is the uh, head of the the Freedom Caucus, which is really sort of the Tea Party. Uh, slice of the Republicans in the House. Uh, he's pretty vocal and he's one that's really been sitting down with Boehner and trying to hash some of this stuff out. I wonder if he's going to be a name that's thrown into the mix or not. Other than that, uh, I think it's a little too early to speculate like where the, where the Republicans are going on this, but I think those are probably two names to look at at this point. And do you expect to hear from any of the GOP presidential candidates weigh in on this today, Steve? Well, so there, a lot of them are in town. Uh, they're speaking to the Values Voters Summit, which is an evangelical um, a group. Uh, and so uh, there'll be opportunities for them to speak to the media. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they're all asked about it and they have an opinion on it. I mean, we're going to be watching very, very closely to see uh, especially what uh, the sitting senators uh, have to say about all this, because it really uh, is, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 puts a, it raises a lot of questions about how um, the Republicans are running uh, Congress. They're in charge of both houses, and this is really an indictment of of I think where the, the Republicans are in the House, there's a lot of infighting going on and what, what is the future of the Republican Party in Congress? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, we've talked before about this idea when we've seen more conservative Republicans clash with other Republicans within the party and the question we ask is, what is this doing to the image of the party? And so I ask you that. This resignation um, with such short notice, a lot of, catching a lot of people by surprise, what is this doing for the image of the party? Well, there's always, I mean, no matter who's in charge, there's always a faction that's not going to be completely in line with, with leadership. Uh, leadership tends to, they, they have to make deals, they have to work across the aisle, they have to get things passed, and so they're not always going to be uh, completely left wing or completely right wing, right? So uh, there's always going to be uh, an issue, and this happened when Nancy Pelosi was running the House, and there were, there were a faction of Democrats who were not very happy with her leadership. But at the end of the day, uh, you usually get them in line for most of these big things. It's just in the last few years, it seems that the Tea Party faction uh, on the Republican side just has been unwilling to uh, really cooperate uh, with, uh, with leadership and, 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 and compromising. And so I guess the question is, moving forward, are there enough of those Republicans to take over leadership of the House? And then what does that mean in terms of getting things done in Congress? If we're already so... Um, you know, if we're already so split in terms of uh, no compromise, and you've seen it year after year in the, in, in the past, you know, several years on both sides in the House and the Senate, and people complaining about Congress not being able to get things done, are we, you know, are they going to be able to get more or less done if there's just this unbending, uh, you know, viewpoint and n unwillingness to compromise uh, with uh, with leadership? Yeah, and also right now the entire country is watching uh, you know, a number of GOP candidates hash it out to become the presidential nominee. Um, people are taking a closer look at the Republican Party. So this can't help that either. We're heading right into an election. Right. It's, uh, here's the thing. So Republicans had something to prove after winning the Senate in 2014. They took over Congress and they, I think, have to show voters. It's a midterm election. They have to show voters going into 2016, we can actually get things done. Well, if the Speaker of the House is quitting uh, and you're setting up a, s a scenario where uh, you're really just so polarized that um, you know you're not compromising with 
people even within your own party. The question is, is how much are they actually going to get done and be able to show to voters next November what they've done in Congress. And so we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe they get some very, you know, uh, they get a great leader in there and they start working things out and all of a sudden things get pushed through. But it seems like the way this is going is that the polarization is getting worse uh, and less is going to get done. And then, you know, it may be an indictment on Republican leadership in Congress and that could hurt Republicans next year. All right. Senior political editor Steve Chikaris, thank you so much.